So I work for a very large media company. We're the largest independent media company in the world, and we live and breathe on data and analysis. So today's world in media and placing and buying media is very data-driven, very analytic-driven. That's what our clients expect. So I oversee pretty much everything data and analytics with our company, um, even though it's, it's pretty much throughout everything that we do, everything from the buying to the planning, targeting, and et cetera. Uh, I'm the person who kind of is bringing it all together. Um, from a vision standpoint, and also to make sure that things are coordinated across the organization. Yeah, so I think, I think the most important thing in analytics is people. Uh, I've been in this for probably two and a half decades, and one of the things I've learned is that there really is the people that are the most important. We can talk about technologies, we can talk about techniques, we can talk about methodologies, but in reality, uh, each hire that I make is a critical decision. It's the most critical decision I make because ultimately that's going to be the success of our organization as a whole. Uh, so I have <clears throat> fairly distinct points of view on hiring and recruiting, um, number, and these are tried and true. They work for, they've worked for different analytical companies that I've worked for that were cutting edge, um, and they're, they're, it's a formula that I've used. Um, and basically I hire for, number one, I hire for intelligence. I don't care what their background is as much as I want somebody who's very, very smart, because I can teach smart people anything. What I can't teach them is, are they, uh, the, the second thing I always look for is, are they inquisitive? Are they curious people? By nature, are they very aggressive in a good way? Somebody who's passionate about finding out new information and, and very curious, I think that, that one-two punch of brains and curiosity uh, is something that I almost always find as a, as a um, uh, sort of winning combination, winning formula. With that, uh, I can pretty much teach them everything, give them the right tools, give them the right guidance, and that's part of, of the, the rest of the answer is that um, I, I like to build a, uh, an organization where people are working together, and that's not just you know, uh, words, that's something that I actually, actually want in my organization, is people that can work together that are team players, um, and so that's a very important thing. So I do look for uh, fit and personality, uh, so that they're the people that you wanna work with day in and day out, and, and ultimately I think those things are the most important in creating an organization. because there's so many different opportunities. And one of the things, I'm also a big believer that I, don't, I like generalists. I like people who are very deep, but they also that can have wear multiple hats within the analytic umbrella. And so I'm very conscious about how they move them into different, uh, different experiences. Uh, so they're not just pigeonholed doing one thing and, and sort of that one thing only, unless that's something that they really want to do and are built for. I have found people that, that they, just, they just like to do the same thing and, and have expertise in that. Um, but by and large, the people that are going to be uh, looking elsewhere and so forth, um, a lot of times it really comes down to are they learning enough, especially in the analytic world, people always want to learn new things uh, and be with the new challenges and so forth. And so I'm very conscious in ha having them uh, understand the uh, progression and, and sort of have a path as far as so that they are building other expertise uh, within the analytic umbrella. And with that, I find that they're better overall, so that they're not just a one-trick pony. Yeah, I think you know it's, it goes down to if you really know a subject, you can distill it in in I think clarity, and I think that's part of it is, is really understanding the material inside and out, and and taking then taking a point of view of what does this mean from a from a person standpoint, not from a from an analytical standpoint, not from a, a technical standpoint, but really on a day to day what to the to a, specific, a particular person, um, and what we found is that the people who really understand things inside and out can get that clarity. It's, it's when you don't quite know what's going on that you, you kind of backtrack into very technical terms. Uh, I, trend not to, I tend to hire people that can be both left and right brain. Uh, my best analysts, I can go down the list of people that I've hired, uh, they're generally very left and right brain oriented, almost to a T. I've never found somebody who is purely, purely technical who could, who could be the best analyst. It's somebody who can actually communicate um, because at the end of the day, they, they may be doing some very high-end stuff in terms of analytics, some cutting-edge stuff, but if they can't translate that to a client uh, or even internally, uh, then, then the, the value is, is really just not there. So how do I uh, communicate to the leadership? Uh, our leadership team is very, uh, they may not be analytically savvy, but they know what they want, and they're really appreciative of what analytics can do because they're here in the marketplace. 
uh, we're constantly in new business pitches. We're constantly, uh, we've got uh, clients that are the biggest advertisers in, in, in the country and the world. And, and they're always being asked about analytics. So the, uh, I have a, it's, it's not a hard sell when you're in that kind of a mode um, to, to, for people to appreciate uh, the value of it. And I get support up and down the organization because of that, because it's being uh, not just forced on them. These are, these are highly intelligent people that I work with. We have a company, uh, fortunate enough to have a company of very highly intelligent, motivated people who have st stayed with the company. Uh, it's a rare combination, um, but, but that enables them to work as a team and to appreciate uh, what things like analysts can bring to the, to the organization. And so I, as from an up and down standpoint, uh, I've always found that from the, from the mid-level managers all the way up to the top, uh, that, that the support is there because they've seen the potential of it. They know the potential, and they're also, they understand our marketplace, the, the world that we live in terms of media, and they know how important it is. So ROI is really important to a media company. We have to show the value of every dollar spent. And so we have to maximize with that dollar and make it, make it two, make it three times what you're spending in terms of that investment. So ROI is kind of in the nature of media. Um, and analytics is really understanding and proving that, that ROI. So in, in a way, calculating and, and coming up with what is the answer? What is, how much is this media, media worth? So every analysis that we do is, is actually understanding ROI. Um, but it's also proving that out because we do an analysis for $100,000 and that's something that's optimizing $50 million worth of media spend and we're showing them how they can make that uh, act like 60 or 70 million, then you know, the, the ROIs are pretty evident from that kind of analysis. And that's, that's a lot of times how we position it. We try to understand, um, we are, the, the one thing that's different about how we operate uh, in the media world is we are not a profit center. And I, I, when I took the job, uh, with our uh, CEO, our founder, I basically made that clear to him is that we are, my business should be driving my client's business and not I'm going to make a million dollars here, a million dollars there in terms of a P&L within my company. It's how do I drive my business? How do I drive my client's business? And with that, I could either um, elect to recommend an outside vendor who might be better at something than we are, or if it's a white space, uh, something where there's no analytics, but we have proprietary techniques that we filled that gap, we'll do it. Um, and so the, um, very, it's a very open and honest conversation we have with clients, and they know because of that model, they know that um, their best interest is in my best interest. And so from an ROI perspective, when I put the business case together, I'm very honest in what this can potentially do. So if we propose a specific analysis, and that might cost $150,000, $200,000 and up, um, I'm very good at understanding and showing them the business case that we can improve your media effectiveness so much, therefore it's worthwhile doing this. And if we all feel uncomfortable that it may not prove out, we'll do tests. We'll do very limited types of, um, uh, maybe not a full-blown execution, but something that will prove the value and then scale it from there. I would say getting good people. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, um, you know, my, my, my point of view on, on good talent, it's very hard to come by. And, and in today's world, uh, it's, actually, it's actually even more difficult because as you pointed out, you know, it's very, very competitive. So finding good talent, uh, retaining them is, is, is less of an issue because our company is, is pretty good at, at retaining talent. Um, we've, been, we've got high accolades as places to work and because of my philosophies, I think, I think we've had some pretty good um, uh, uh, staying, stickiness. Um, but it's really finding them in the first place. And so with that, you know, one of the things that we found successful is really just um, is the networking. You know, we do a lot of networking. People that know people is generally some of the best, um, the best places we go. But that's my, that's my biggest challenge is really finding, finding the good people because without uh, good people, you, you're, and there's, there's really, uh, you're really shooting yourself on the foot in terms of what you can accomplish uh, through analytics. We're really aggressive at looking at the different technologies that are out there. There's no, I spend an inordinate amount of time basically canvassing the whole landscape of vendors, and that's in ad tech, it's in pure technology, that's in data plays, everywhere. We spend, and there are people in my organization, uh, the amount of vendors that we see a week is staggering because of the space that we're in, and also because we do see it as a competitive advantage of trying to understand where the puck is moving, where things are going. Uh, where things are going in three to five years. And so for, there are specific things to my, uh, my vertical or my space where I see things in the next three to five years. 
um, and we're actively cr you know, cultivating those and working with vendors um, on some of those ideas that, that we see. Um, I do believe that measurement um, is an important element of what we do, so understanding return on investment and understanding measurement is a key to any media company, any marketing company. Um, and more and more where we're starting to see data plays, being able to connect the dots through data as opposed to modeling or A-B testing, those types of things, we're seeing it as, a, as really where the wave of the future is, and it's a very much of a tech play. You know, you have to understand how to connect the dots through technology and how people navigate through the world and through media and consuming media. But we, we spend a lot of time trying to come up with new and innovative ways, um, speaking with vendors, trying to pressure test them on the realities of things. Uh, and we've built systems to, to amass that information that I'll talk about this afternoon at the forum, um, really because it's, it's such a, uh, we think, a, uh, an important element. It's not just doing analytics, it's basically cultivating it um, and figuring out what, where we're going to be three to five years from now and driving that to a large extent, not just really, you know, waiting for a vendor to come to us with the magic answer, but working with them, Some, sometimes putting two and three vendors together to come up with a solution that's not in the marketplace. We have a very strict system and knowledge base uh, where we capture information on vendors. So as we talk to vendors, as we evaluate them, it's not just one singular point of contact. We have our subject matter experts. So if it's somebody in mobile, we'll have our mobile team involved. If it's somebody from, from uh, broadcast, we have them involved. We typically have teams to evaluate vendors. Uh, and sometimes those teams meet with the vendors uh, as, a, as a subset. And so how do you collect all that information? Because otherwise, you're just spinning. Otherwise, there's no massive amount, there's no um, consolidated way of understanding what the heck they, they can and can't deliver on and what some of the pr uh, pros and cons are. So we have a very structured uh, way that we put through the, every, every vendor that we talk to that we're populating constantly and that they have different authors to and, and what essentially is a knowledge base that anybody can get to within you know, a few clicks. And so if I want to understand, you know, who's the best vendor for this type of data or what's the best measurement technology or what do I know about this company, uh, it's quantified in, in a knowledge base that multiple people can access and look at, the entire company can look at it, um, and then certain people become the experts to, to distill that information both formally through that device but also informally as we, as we work together. Um, cutting through noise, that's, that's one of the most important skills I think to understand in terms of vendor assessment is really to understand how to cut through the noise and also how to divorce quickly. You could spend an entire entire day just talking with vendors and so you have to understand there's a certain skill set of when a vendor should become somebody you should focus on versus somebody you need to say okay this, I, I'm not, this is not going anywhere and unfortunately we're all nice people uh, unfortunately you have to be very, I found it's better to be honest for both parties and say this is not, you know there's really no, no more discussion here and uh, it, it's, it's cut and dry, and, and I don't like doing it, but in reality, it's, it's the best for everybody. So, so we have a, a kind of a playbook that we go through in terms of these evaluations, but you know, as a media company, we're, it's staggering the amount of, comp of uh, vendors that we do talk to and evaluate. I think, I think the first thing is you have to be you have to be aggressive in, in a good way. I mean, this is a, the, the, the amount of, uh, of things that I go through in a typical day is staggering. You have to be able to time slice. You have to be able to multitask like I've never done before in my life. And I've worked in consulting and big, you know, big consulting companies where I have multiple projects. Um, you, you do have to cut through the noise. One of the most important things is being able to understand what's important and prioritize and go from thing to thing to thing without losing efficiency. Um, prioritization, absolutely key. No question about it. You have to have a good vision, but you also have to really good tactically because if the team doesn't quite understand something specific, you better roll up your sleeve and jump in and show them because that's what they, that's what they want and that's what they expect. Um, but without the vision, then you know, you got, uh, the, the team isn't going in the right place. So there's a lot of different things that are needed um, for, for their position. And um, I don't know too much about the recruiting for other positions, but I was, I was taken a little bit through the recruiting for my position and it's a lot of time and effort to find the right thing. Uh, and part of it is you have to align it with what are you exactly looking for? You know, we've had some discussions about chief analytic officer, what is it versus chief data officer versus CIO, and what are the different roles? Um, and I think a lot of that comes down to the company and how big they are and what their needs are, et cetera. My role is actually somewhat of a combination between chief data officer as far as strategy goes, 
um, as, as opposed to implementation, which our CIO takes care of. So I'm, I'll, I'll be the one who is setting the vision on how data should be structured, what information is key, what we should be focusing on, uh, because I know the end game of how it's going to be used. And, and essentially that's, uh, you know, that's something that a, a chief analytic officer has to have, is a sense of what the end game is and where we're going. But, but there's a lot of detail behind it. Even in, I get involved in a lot of the vendor evaluations, and, and you have to really understand some of the, a lot of the details. So somebody who can go up and down you know, at the drop of a hat, but also be able to com communicate all these technical things to a non-technical audience. You know, analytics in my company is only a small portion. These are media people. And so even though they're very intelligent, and even though they do have a uh, good background in some analytics, you have to, as you mentioned before, how do you distill very complex things into you know, something that's that, that somebody can understand, and, and that's more, uh, you know, more business uh, jargon than, 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 than technical terms. I think the biggest thing was, as far as the topic of people, I think you need to be, and this is something that's very controversial, because I've, I've been in myriads of business pitches as I've you know, been in analytic companies, uh, and, and, and have, they've asked me, you know, what are the type of people you hire, and what do you have? When it comes to people, my biggest, my biggest um, thing that I think is a little bit different is don't necessarily hire on technicality, technical capabilities. Hire on intelligence, curiosity, and somebody who has the capability to learn uh, new tools, new techniques, and so forth. By far better analysts when you have that. I'm not saying don't have that PhD in stats on your team. But realize what they're, what they, sh what role that person should have, and what role the people that I just described should have, because they're very, very different. And particularly in a media company, when you have client facing and so forth. So in my mind, it's it's kind of the an analogous to somebody who can build and maintain a race car, and the people that can drive them. And in my mind, a team that has a pretty, a couple pretty good builders, and people can engineer the car and so forth but then a lot of people that can really just drive that car around, that to me is the right model. And a lot of people don't have that philosophy. I see so many organizations, analytic organizations, that are just peppered entirely uh, with much more technical people, and I think that's wrong. And I think with some of the technologies that are out, not to get into any details, but some of the technologies that we're using and that, we've, we, uh, that I'm seeing on the landscape are enabling us to shift more toward that type of model. <laughs>